Well, hi everyone, I'm Simon Kage. Uh, I work on IBM Cloud where I am the technical lead of the continuous delivery pipeline team. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about a really hot topic, uh, machine language, uh, machine learning ops, uh, and in particular how it pertains to Kubeflow and Tekton. So um, earlier this year, my team in IBM Cloud really embraced Tekton. And so through like a number of initiatives that we ran throughout the year, uh, we've sort of, we're now looking, f looking to standardize on Tekton uh, as our underlying, uh, underlying pipeline runtime. Um, this was not lost on our, our uh, machine learning friends in IBM Watson. And so what happened is uh, they approached us uh, and they were looking to partner uh, to use Tekton as the underlying runtime for Kubeflow. And so they said, hey, do you think this is a good idea? Uh, at the time, I knew very little about machine learning, um, but I knew, and very even less about Kubeflow, uh, but I knew a lot about Tekton, and, and, I, and I've got a lot of confidence in Tekton, so I said, hey, yeah, sure, that's totally a good idea. Um, so <laughs> I thought MLOps was like some brand new derivative of DevOps. Um, that's not the case. Uh, it turns out uh, MLOps in a parallel universe has been working on tooling for the last 10 years. Uh, and it's very rich, and that was very new to me. So uh, here's a quick intro uh, with, with a little help from XKCD on machine learning. Um, software engineers write programs, they write code. Uh, data scientists, on the other hand, uh, train models. Um, at first, I thought, oh my god, these are totally different. Um, but actually, I think they're actually really quite similar. I think the difference is um, a data scientist is programming with data. They actually use a little bit of programming languages too, primarily Python. Uh, but really, these, these two worlds are the same. And if you look like a, a level deeper and say, hey, what is the, you know, day to day, what is the programmer versus data scientist doing? I think you find that they're they're developing in a very iterative, iterative way. Um, you know, they're writing code that's bad and then they're fixing it. Um, or they're getting garbage results in their model and they're retuning it. So cool, I totally get this now. So what is MLOps? It's a compound of machine learning and operations. Really it's a set of practices around the ML lifecycle. And so this is a snapshot of uh, an ML workflow. Um, and it might look really familiar to most of you. It's because it looks a lot like a software, a software development workflow. Um, there's certainly differences. The, the red bits, you know, you're training your model versus programming and testing. And the feed loop, feedback loop is also a little different. The feedback loop actually in ML is a lot faster. Like think how many, when you watch Netflix, think how, how often your, your, your model is getting updated by your, by your decisions. But nonetheless, I think that ML is probably a sub, the ML workflow is a subset of the software engineering workflow. So, uh, Kubeflow. Um, so I didn't know about Kubeflow, but what it is is a project dedicated to deploying your ML workflows. Uh, and what's cool about it is it aims to integrate existing tools, best of breed tools, as opposed to um, building their own. So uh, my hammer is Tekton. So I was looking at this, you know, this picture and going, oh, where can we participate? You know, hyperparameter tuning where they're like fixing the size of their neural net and tuning algorithms. Yeah, we could play there. Fairing, which is distributing work, model training, which apparently is where all the time is spent. All cool stuff. Uh, but when I talked to the, the Kubeflow experts in my company, um, they basically said, you should solve a small problem, solve the pipeline problem. Um, this actually makes a lot of sense. This is about orchestration, and hey, Tekton, we're also all about orchestration. So, anyone got a favorite language? Anyone like Go, Rust, huh? Python, JavaScript? Any, anyone like to program in YAML? <laughs> yeah, not so much. So, I think DSLs clearly have, uh, you know, there's, they, they, their, their time is gonna come in this space. Uh, and so, Kubeflow pipelines, it's a, DS, it's a Python-based DSL for creating your pipeline. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make Tekton a, a viable compile target for your Kubeflow pipelines. Where are we doing this work? 
Uh, so about a few months ago, Animesh Singh, from, uh, he's a dev advocate in the uh, ML side, um, he said, hey, let's create a, let's, let's create a SIG at CDF, um, and, uh-oh. Um, and the ML, so the, the SIG's about, uh, hey, how can we use ML ops, and how can we leverage the work we've done in the CD projects? Uh, initial implementation, all tacked on. This, uh, this ML, the, this uh, Kubeflow pipelines, that's where we're doing work, but the scope's really broad, and we can do lots of cool things here. Uh, just a final thought. Uh, our predicted growth rate for ML is, is, oh, is 50% a year. So our, what is it, combined aggregate growth rate is 50% per year. So this is like Moore's Law. And so you should probably pay attention. This might be what we're all doing in five years. So thank you, everyone. Um, so uh, just more information. These slides I'm going to make public. Uh, if you want them right now, ping me in Slack at Tecton. Uh, but the, the CDF SIG ML Ops meets every other Thursday, uh, 9.30 Pacific. <laughs> and, uh, and so next meeting is December 5th, so we'd invite you to join. Thanks very much.